All right. So it costs two dirhams to park at the mall for the first four hours, and then two dirhams per hour after that. How does this look? So two dirhams for the first four hours. Then it's going to cost two dirhams per hour after that. So it's going to go up by two, it's going to go up by two, it's going to go up by two. You draw it like that? Yeah. No, I, I, I thought I'd just mislead you. If we stay exactly four hours, how much do we pay? Two. Two. So then we means we're going to have to have a dot there and a circle here. If we stay exactly five hours, how much do we pay? So we need to think about these endpoints, like this one. Can we stay less than uh, zero hours? Can we? No. Function looks like this. How do we write this as a function? Nope. Good, good idea. Y equals 2x plus 2 is... That's y plus 2x plus 2. That's not going to work. We need a new type of function, a piecewise function. And it's just made of a series of, a series of smaller fun pieces of functions. We call it a piecewise function. So f of x is going to be equal to, and we need a curly bracket like this one, single curly bracket. Inside here, we can put rules and then domains. So for the first part, it's going to cost two. And the domain of that is from zero up to and including four. Then it's going to cost four. And that's going to be from four up to including five. Then it's going to cost six. And that's going to be from five up to and including six and then it's going to cost eight and this is going to go from six and so on no, no. so this is what we call a piecewise function you can define it in a series of different pieces Does this function have an inverse? Yeah. Does it? No. Wait. How can we tell? Is this a function, in fact? Uh, Is this a function? No. It's a piecewise Why is it a function? How do we know, looking at this graph, how do we know that yes, it is a function, and no, it is not an, there is, it's not an invertible? There is no inverse. For inverse, it's well, it the horizontal and vertical. I know, but nobody seems to know these answers. The horizontal line is a vertical line. Okay. So what is the vertical line? So if you pass a vertical line through the function at any point, it can only go through the function once. And that's why it's interesting about defining these points here, like a four. If we pass a vertical line through four, do we pass through the function once or twice? Once. We pass through it once, which is why we have to be very clear on how we define these domains, that four is only included in this part of the rule and not in this part. So the vertical line test, it passes that. If you pass the vertical line test, that means it is a function. Horizontal line test, does it pass the horizontal line test? Horizontal line test, it's going to fail here on that. So, think of it logically. Let's say you paid two hours, I mean, you paid two uh, dinners to stay at the mall. 
That would be what you put into the inverse one. And we, we paid two out two euros. How many minutes did we stay? In two hours. If we paid two dirhams, work out how many minutes we stayed. How many minutes did we stay if we stayed two dirhams? If we paid two dirhams. Four times sixteen. No, it's two hundred. You can't work it out. So from the amount we paid. Between zero. Between one and two. There's no answer to this question. If you pay two dirhams, you have no way of working out how many minutes you stayed. You could have stayed no minutes, you could have stayed uh, 240 minutes. So so is it from what, zero hours to four? From anywhere from zero to four, you would have paid two dirhams. You can't work backwards from the amount you paid to how long you stayed. You can't say you say 3.25 hours, or three hours and 15 minutes, or 195 minutes. You can't work that out. See the mental map, even on a Friday, pretty good. So this function has no input. All right, so here's an example for you. Try and work this one out, work together with the person next year if you need to, uh, and sketch the function. Um, plot state the domain and then calculate f of zero and f of six. I'll pause the video. All right, sorry, the board's not working. Right, so we need to find what f of zero is. This is super easy. So this is our function here. This is how it's defined. We don't write in green. We write f of zero. We put zero into this function. Which domain does it lie in? The first one or the second one? First. It says. Look. It says if the number you're putting in is between minus two and three, use this as the rule. So the answer is four. If we put f of uh, six in, which domain does it lie in? It lies in the second one. So if we put f of six, it lies in between three and seven. So then we put it in using the rule this time. So we put it in here, six goes in there, plus seven, which equals one. So we can plot those two points. It's going to go through here. We could plot this point. This is the coordinate six comma. This is the coordinate six comma one. So we know it goes through here. Like that. So the function is going to be a straight line to begin with from minus two. So it's going to start here. And it's going to go to there, so it goes across like this. What are the endpoints? Are they included or excluded of that line? Both of these endpoints are included, aren't they? Yeah. These are included points. So to draw the straight line, we can't assume it's going to match up. We have to figure out whether it does or not. So the slope here is minus one, which means it's going down one y value for every x value. So if we know it goes through this point, we know it goes through these points here, like this. It goes down one y value for every x value we move across. So we can draw a line now for this one. So this one is going to go from 3 to 7. So it goes like this. Is 7 included? Yeah. That's also an included point. Put a dot there. So this is how the function looks. This is how the function looks. What is the domain of the function? Negative two, negative, uh, negative two something. Yeah. So for B, 
is A, this is B. The function has a domain X is defined as going from negative 2 up to and including 7. And X is a real number. So we can define the domain like that. <coughs> that looks awful. I don't know if you can follow. So yes. if you're wrong with that, I just put that square brackets 2 and negative 10. No, that would be accepted on this course. So we could just answer the question simply with a statement like that one. Um, typically, the mark schemes on the IB look for an inequality as a statement of the domain. So you could also just simply give this as the domain. You could just give this as the domain. That's usually what the mark schemes look for. The graph is plotted. This is y equals f of x. And we're done. Let's skip that. We don't have much time today. Uh, have a go at finding the piecewise function shown here in these two graphs. So, can you try doing the first one with us? All right, thanks, guys. So, we have the answers here. So, with oh, I'll write in red for this one. So, with this first one, we see that it goes from minus four up to zero. So, that's why we get a zero here. And then the next part of the function goes from 0 to 3, so we have 0 to 3. We need a linear function for each. This one here goes up at 1x, 1y for every x. And then it has a y intercept at 5. This is why it's x plus 5. This one just continues straight across as y equals 5 for everything, which is why we just have a 5. So here on this one, we go from minus 2 to 2. So we go from minus 2 until 2. This one goes from 2 until 4. So this is 2 till 4. This first line comes down for 1y for every x, and it has a y-intercept of 3. So we go minus x plus 3. This one, you have to move the y-value up, the, the, continue the line in that direction to find the y-intercept constant. We can see it's going to be at minus 1 if we continue the line across. If you're too far from the y-intercept to continue the line across, then you have to calculate. You have to put a coordinate in, put it y, find out what the gradient is. We can see the gradient is 1. So you've got y equals x plus c. So then if you can't find the c value graphically, just put a coordinate in. You can see that it goes through 2 comma 1. So you would say 1 equals 2 plus c and solve. C or B, right? C or B, no, no American is B, C is international. So that's always, is that always going to be the case for these type of questions? Or is it yeah. Okay. Typically they're going to be linear ones. They're really fun, they're really fun to do for, um, for inverse functions sometimes. Uh, neither of these two functions have an inverse. Fun or challenging? No, fun. Okay. All right, we got five minutes left. No, we